So today is uh, November 29th, we're on lesson 5.5. Now I've drawn the three types of triangles, and when you have certain bits of information, one's in sine law, and the other two for cosine law. The best way to know when to use sine law is to make sure you can complete the ratio. So, we have our sine law here. Cosine law. Okay, so we have our two laws here. The best way to know how to find sine law is to make sure you can complete one of the ratios. We have the ratio with A, ratio with B, and the ratio with C. What that means is you have to have an opposite side and angle. So, in our first example, I'm going to fix this a little so it goes faster. We have an opposite side and angle, so I know I can use sine law. In our third one, we have an opposite side and angle. I know I can use sine law. Now, in this one, I have a side. Do I know what that angle is? No. Yeah. If I have two angles of a triangle, I can solve. I would subtract by 180, subtract my other two angles. Okay, that's the sign for angles I'm using. Okay. So I can use that for any of the three. The cosine law, if you have all the sides, you can solve for an angle. And if you don't have any of the ratios, so look, I don't have an opposite side and angle, don't have an opposite side and angle, and don't have an opposite side and angle, I would use cosine law. So essentially, always check for your sine law. If you have an opposite side and angle, then you can use sine law. And if not, you guys are using cosine law. So the, uh, example number one is a word problem. It says, Steve leaves the marina at Jordan on a 40-kilometer sailboat race across Lake Ontario. So we got some lake here. So we got a big lake. He starts at Jordan, and he's got to go 40 kilometers across the lake. He's intending to travel at a bearing of 355 degrees. Okay? But an earlier morning fog settles in. By the time it clears, Steve has traveled 32 kilometers on a bearing of 22. So, this is what I try to tell you. He's trying to get to, let's say, Toronto. To Toronto, let's say. Toronto. Now, bearings work like this. We have a bearing is how many degrees clockwise we vary from going magnetic north or directly north. Okay? That's how we know it. So this is north. From Jordan. North is straight up. We're going, he's going on a bearing of 355 degrees. So a circle. 355. We're going to say 355 is essentially where Toronto is. Okay? I'm going to word it, but you won't have a bearing. Okay, so. This bearing is 355 degrees, right? He's gone on a bearing of 355 degrees, which means how many degrees are in between north and where he's traveling? If we were to go to five, five. five, that's right. So there's five degrees here. Remember, a circle has 360 degrees, okay? Remember, a bearing is always clockwise. That's okay. Now, he said he went into a fog, and once the fog cleared, he discovered he'd gone 32 kilometers. He didn't know where he was going, so he ended up going 32 kilometers. 22 degrees. Okay, on a bearing of 22 degrees. So from north, he has a bearing of 22 degrees here. Okay. 
So now his boat is here. And he still needs to get to Toronto. Okay. Remember, how far was the original trip? That was the bearing. How long was the distance? 40. I did. 40 kilometers. So, what we have here is I have a side. I'm going to figure out what this angle is. And I have a side. What will that angle be in between? 22 plus 5 is 27 degrees. So, we have a side, an angle, and a side. Okay? We know that angle in there is 27 degrees. We added the 22 degrees and the 5 degrees from before. So, now in order to solve this, the first thing I need to look at, is this a right angle triangle? No. 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 I, I don't know. There's a possibility no. this is a right angle. But, yeah, yeah. but we, because we don't know, we're going to use the laws. We're going to use sine or cosine law. So, what I want to figure out is we know we can't use any of our SOHCAHTOA or our primary trig ratio. because We don't know if it's a 90 degree. We also cannot use the Pythagorean because it's, we don't know if it's a right angle triangle. So I'm going to be either using sine or cosine law. Now in order to find sine, I need to have an opposite angle inside. I only have one angle. Do I have the opposite side? Nope. No, in fact, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So can I use sine? So what do I use? So we're going to be using our cosine law here. So let's plug in our numbers. Now, because x is what we're looking for, remember I told you to name the triangle accordingly? That's going to be our side C. And then our A and B. That's our A, we'll call it. Yep, and that's our B. So, side C is our x. So we have x squared is equal to our A, we called 32, so we have 32 squared, plus our B, which was 40, minus 2 on 32 times 40, cos, and the angle is 27 degrees. Okay. Move this over a little. X squared is equal to 32 squared is 1,000. 40 squared is 1,600 minus 32 times 40 times 2, 2,560. And remember, we're multiplying by cos 27. We'll add our two numbers together. We're going to get 2,624 is equal to x squared minus, and we can actually equate this, cosine 27 times, remember again, this is your multiplication between these two numbers here. So we're going to figure out cos 27 multiplied by 2,560. Oh, very good point. So we get minus 2,000. 280.976. We're going to subtract our two terms. 343.024. And finally, the opposite of the power of 2 is the square root of 2, or the second root. So our side x is equal to, I keep that number in there to be more accurate, 18.52. 18.52 is how far he still has to travel in terms of this question.
Second example says there's a ladder leaning against a wall. The angle the ladder makes with the wall is 31 degrees. It also says that the ladder is in line with a box, and the box is 64 centimeters tall, 27 centimeters wide. They want us to find the entire length of this ladder. We need to find the entire length. So this is our X. So what we're going to need to do here, first of all, is we're going to need to break this ladder into two pieces. We'll call this piece A and piece B. We know we have a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle there. So. In order to solve this, which ratio can I use to solve for A? Okay. Now, do I have any of the sides of this triangle? Yeah, you have the bottom. Yeah. You have the bottom, 27. Right. We know the box is 27. We also know that the top of the box will be the exact same. And then on that side, 64. Other side should be 64. Yeah, I said that first. The other height of this triangle is 64. Now, we don't actually know what the height of this triangle is here. Okay? But we don't need it. Very good. We can use our right angle triangles to solve for this. I have an angle, I have the opposite side, and I'm looking for the hypotenuse. Which ratio am I going to be using? Which one are you looking for? We're using our sine ratio. Uh, so, because it's opposite and hypotenuse, we're going to use our sine ratio. So, we have our sine law, sorry, not law, sine ratio, our angle from above. 31 degrees. Okay. So I have sine 31 is equal to the opposite side was 27, and the hypotenuse was our unknown. I need to isolate for x. So I want you guys to think of cross multiplying in this case. Imagine the sine 31 is a fraction. Because we have two fractions that are equal to each other, I can cross multiply here to get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to get x multiplied by sine 31. And what is 27 times 1? 27. Okay. Now we still have to isolate x, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation. Wait a oh, that. By sine 31. Two signs are going to cancel each other out. We're left with x is equal to 27 divided by sine 31. So we're going to solve that on the calculator. We can do this all in one shot. In fact, if I put 27 divided by, and then I put the sine 31 in brackets. 52. Point four two. Let me maybe I typed in the calculator wrong. Let's uh let's fit, let's do the sine thirty one first. Let's find sine thirty one first. I might have typed in the calculator. We get twenty seven divided by 0 0.51503. X is equal to 27 divided by 0 0.51503. Oh, no, that's enough. So, we now have a measurement. Our A, we called it, was 50. 
52 centimeters in length. So we got this part here, we'll highlight it. So this part here is 52 in length. We solve that. Now let's go to our other triangle here. So, like Troy said, I need to find out this angle or this angle here. One way we can do it, and I'm going to show you the trick after, is first of all, we can find all the angles for this triangle. We have 31 and 90. We know it has to add up to 180. So if we have 180, subtract 90, gives us 90. And then we subtract our other angle, which is 31. We're going to get 59. So this angle here is 59 degrees. Now, because we assume this is a 90 degree box, this angle here is 90 degrees. And since this is a straight line, um, let's do it across here. This is a straight line right here. A straight line is 180 degrees. So we do 180 minus 90 minus 59 to solve this angle. So 180 minus 90 is 90 minus third, sorry, 59. minus 59. Anyone know what's going to equal? 31. So another way we could have looked at it is these two are similar triangles. This angle up here is 31. This one's here, it's 31. So what is this angle down here? 59. 59, very good. Now we have to solve for our B. We can use any ratio because we know all the angles here. Oh, sorry. This is the side I'm working with. So uh, we used sine last time. Let's use cosine this time for this question. So we're going to use cosine law to solve this, oh, sorry, ratio. cosine ratio. Our angle we'll use again is 31. So we have cos 31 is equal to the adjacent side is 64. Our hypotenuse is our B. Okay. So it's 64 over X. Um, same thing as before. We need to bring X to the other side. So because there's a division sign here, when I bring x over, I'll be multiplying by x. So we're going to get x times cos 31 is equal to 64. And finally, we're trying to isolate x. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by cos 31. So we'll get x is equal to 64 divided by cos 31. Uh, it's going to be 74.6. Now the last thing we need to do in this question, because we now found this part of the triangle, We need to add the two together to find out our x. So x was equal to a plus b. This was our a, we called it. This was our b. The entire ladder was equal to a plus b. So we're going to plug in our two values, 52. And we'll round the other one to, oh, so 75. We end up with 127. 127 centimeters is the length of this ladder. Why would I ever do that? Homework. <laughs>